I'm going to take you for a walk. Now, I'll see if I can turn you around like that. Let's go for a walk. So that piece of rose quartz is a bit bigger, Crikey. wouldn't you say? Wow, that's massive. So, yes, but it doesn't matter if it's this big, this big, or a tiny little piece. It's still known as a massive formation. Okay. Are you with me? Because it hasn't got a crystalline structure that we can see easily um, just off the bat. Like we can, say, a piece of crocoite, and we look at the tiny little crystals, we can see that they're all the same shape. Um, they haven't got a pointy termination. They've got almost a flattish termination, um, famous Tassie mineral. Um, but we can see that they're little crystals. Something like rhodonite, massive formation. Peacock ore, massive formation. So Jackie, we're, we're in an art gallery here. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. You want to see art. You want to see art. Come on, let's get this <laughs> So, pyrite is one of my faves because it breaks all the rules. Breaks all the rules. So, your silicon dioxide, your quartz crystal, when it forms, it creates that crystal that we've been looking at, which is six sided, goes to a point. We bring it out of the ground, we know that it's a quartz crystal. Pyrite is like saying if we cook a pancake in Spain, it's going to come out flat. Um, or square or round, depending on what country we go to, that pancake is going to come out a different shape. It's all the same ingredients. But in Spain, it comes out like that. I haven't cut and polished that. You're joking. I'm not. And I, <laughs> uh, I enjoy showing guys that when they, when they just, you know, think that everything's, you know, everything man-made has got to be better. I'm sorry, but you try and get a straight edge like that and a polish like that. Um, no. And that's on its matrix. The matrix is what we call the stone that it comes out of the ground with or on or grows in is a matrix. It's unbelievable. Isn't that isn't it beautiful? Now, that is art. Yeah, now Liz, is, Liz agrees. She says that's stunning. Thank you, Liz. This is, this is from the States. That's They call them sand dollars. Um, anybody that's got one of those at home, just put, put it into a, a container with... Um, some of the silica gel because it will break down eventually. I've had a few break down, unfortunately. But that's how flat it comes. In South Australia, it's spheres. In Tassie, it's these ones are from Tassie. And they're spheres made up of little squares. It's just bonkers. Bonkers. Wow. Um, yep. Yeah, and that's from Peru. So, you know, things like um, pyrite come in different formations, but it's all the same. Yeah, how heavy is that one that you just picked up? This one? Yeah. It's probably. I don't know, 300 grams. So fairly heavy? It looks fairly solid. Fairly heavy, yes, yeah, it, is, yeah. it is solid. This one's quite, yeah, yeah I'm not going to even lift no, that one. Lift that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, you get so many different structures. Can you so just show us that one there, Jackie? Yeah, that, that one. It, now, you're saying that's out of the ground. That's out of all of these. None of these have been yeah. polished or touched. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't it gorgeous? I mean, floor, can I move on? I'm, I'm going off subject here, but. I'm getting excited because no, good. this is like, my world. Uh, Ian has said so cool, so we're all impressed. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this one is, can you see the, the different crystal shapes of this guy? Mm. That's fluorite. And, you know, look at it. It's just superb. And you go from that, and this is another piece. This is a rare piece from Illinois um, that I brought back in 30 years. Um, and you just... I've got blown up photographs of this. Now, people say, why do you wear glasses, Jackie? Well, it's years and years and years of being um, over a microscope looking at these guys because you get a microscope and you go over this, it's like going over a mountain range and it's like a different universe. It's not all just quartz and you can go from one to another to another to another and it just blows you away. It just blows you away. Sorry, we're going to go for another walk. Now, Jackie, I reckon you should be rivaling uh, Mona there for uh, you know, people to come. <laughs> you know, you, you should know, be a major tourist attraction for Tasmania. Oh, look. Look, we we just need more more places that can show a bit of natural art. And yeah, that, you're really showing off. I know. 19 million years old, roughly. 19 to 20. I'm not, I'm not doing the birthday candles this year, okay? <laughs> and this, this is what we're famous for in Tassie is the serpentine and stitch type. That's, um, I cut and polish a lot of that. It's like polishing wheat bix, but I do. Um, so why is your famous in Tassie? It's, it's quite prevalent. Because there's, only half a he because there's only half a 
peel and the whole world's got this. And oh, we've wow. got it. And the serpentine is very common, the grain. But the stitch type, yeah, it's a little bit more rare. But to get the two together, very rare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what, you know, Tassie's kind of famous for. And you get a little purple in it. It's just warble. But the, if you're out there wanting to polish some, it is a difficult thing to polish. It's doable, I do it, but it is a heartbreaker. I thought opals were a heartbreaker, my goodness. Um, you know, it does, it does fall away sometimes when you're on that last part of the polish as well. doesn't okay. like heat. Uh, yeah. You've got to be very gentle when you're polishing it. So Liz is appreciating the tour, and Greg says that he's a jeweler and a gem guy, and he loves crystals. So you've got some very good. Any. Well, you've got to you've you've got to um, you've got to like the crystals to do what we do, don't you? But that's where it and, starts. And Jackie has just commented that she's having a ball. She's loving the tour. <laughs> yeah. I'll see if I can put you back on the counter and get back on subject, shall I? <laughs> <laughs>